My name is Marcus De Bruyne. I'm a GP. I qualified in 2002. I did my GP training in, in New Zealand where I lived and worked for five years and um, I opened up my practice here in Rush in 2010. I went into medicine because I've always had an interest in science and always had an interest in nature in particular and the interface between nature and science to me is, is perfectly uh, expressed in human medicines. Well, when COVID arrived in, in, in January, February of, of this year, I was quite interested in, in this virus. I, I have an interest in virology. I studied microbiology before I, I, I studied medicine. So I was very, very interested in what was happening. What was this disease that was going to be arriving in Ireland? We were supposed to be preparing for it in January. So uh, when I looked into it and, 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 and did some reading and did some research and looked into Corona, viruses I, I found the whole subject matter very intriguing very interesting and, and but the interest kind of changed to, to been kind of jumping in at the deep end I suppose because I, I was looking after a nursing home um, at the time and when the virus arrived in Ireland um, it certainly uh, it made its presence very much felt in the nursing home where I was working a, a, a lot of people started to die from the virus and um, I was very troubled by that because I thought a lot of what was going on and a lot of the management and how the virus was being managed was particularly bad, if not uh, uh, frighteningly bad. Um, you know, the, the, the nursing homes opted to close their doors in, in, in February and the, the minister insisted that they keep them open and, and we couldn't get PPE, we couldn't get uh, oxygen tanks, we couldn't get medicine, you know, the masks even in the nursing home were disappearing. Staff were so frightened and so fearful that masks had to be locked up. So uh, things started to fall apart in the nursing home sector. You know, we couldn't get tests for the patients. And we were told that if one patient had it in the nursing home that you were not allowed to test anybody else. And during this process, whilst there was a shortage of tests, I was returning to my practice and according to the guidelines, I was um, testing people who I knew didn't need to be tested, like healthy kids and that people calling up. So things were being managed very badly and, and very wrong and people were dying and, and I, was very, I was very upset by that. I became very, very alarmed and very, very upset because very bad things, very strange things were happening. Uh, for example, I'd go to the nursing homes and, and patients would be arriving from the hospitals as the government was trying to, and NEFIT were trying to clear out the hospitals. And I didn't mind that, I had no objection to that. Um, but after a while, as the patients were arriving, I'd, I had assumed that they were being tested for COVID. Um, but when I scratched the surface and when I looked for the test results for these patients who were coming from the hospital for respite care, none of them had been tested. And my patients, my the residents at the nursing homes, at the nursing home started to die. The, the COVID was essentially tearing through the nursing home. We had 12, 13 people die. Um, the other nursing home in the town where, where I work, my colleague uh, looks after that nursing home, they, had, they were full, so they had no transfers from the hospital and they had no, no deaths. So uh, I was very upset and I was very annoyed that, that this all started as something that we needed to work together to protect the elderly. But I found myself in a situation where I couldn't test the residents at the nursing home, where people were being dumped, residents were being effectively dumped into the nursing home without being tested. And COVID was ripping through this nursing home that I was responsible for and people were dying. And I felt effectively abandoned, entirely abandoned by, by the state. And I felt deeply saddened for the families that I had to speak to and for the nurses who were working there and dealing with this, this, this horrible disease and these, hor these horrific deaths and having to speak to, to family members who, who couldn't come in and couldn't be with their loved ones. So I really felt morally obligated to say something and to do something. And the only thing I had in my power was I was a, a, a member of the Irish Medical Council um, appointed by Minister Harris. So I, I resigned in an attempt to whistleblow what I felt was blatant neglect.
When I was given an opportunity to, to, to speak with Health Freedom Ireland, and I did so with some degree of uh, fear and trepidation uh, about appearing in, in public before such a big crowd of people. But I felt it was something that I had to do, and the reason I felt that I had to do it was because I'm a believer in science and I'm a believer in evidence-based medicine. And Professor Carl Hennigan of Oxford University in the, in the Department of Evidence-Based Medicine had made his submission to the Dáil Committee on COVID-19 on the subject of masks, for example. And he would pointed out and he would stated emphatically that mask policy was not evidence-based, that cloth masks, homemade cloth masks were a health hazard, uh, were bad for people's health. And that chimed in with my own practice. I would see people coming in and out of my practice wearing these dirty masks and having skin infections and dermatitis from these masks and sweating profusely because they're wearing these homemade masks and none of that made sense to me. But what Professor Hennigan expressed to the COVID-19 committee, that was evidence-based medicine. That was my home turf. That's science. So I felt that that message had to be sustained and had to be kept alive and had to be championed or spoke about in, in, in some way, you know. So that was one of the reasons that I went. And the second reason that I spoke at the, at the, at the, at the, at the rally was essentially I felt that the, the candle has to be kept alive for the people who have died in Irish nursing homes. I firmly believe that they died of neglect and they died terrible deaths. And those people deserve a full public inquiry. And it was for those two reasons that I went to the rally. But the government wants to tell us that these people were looked after, that these were mistakes that happened everywhere. Well, I'm sorry, that's not true. On planet Earth, next to Canada, Ireland has the highest rate of nursing home debts in the world. And if that is not enough to allow the those people the dignity of a full, independent public inquiry, then we are not living in a democracy. Speaking at the rally uh, was probably the worst thing I think I could have done for my career um, as a general practitioner. Um, the damage I think that it's done to my reputation amongst my colleagues has been uh, huge. Um, I think I'm looked upon as a right-wing lunatic, as some sort of a, a fanatic or, or, or um, certainly entirely marginalised, you know. I mean, I, I was the first person, the first doctor, I think, in Ireland to speak out about what was going on when I resigned my position in respect of the nursing homes. And I don't say that with any degree of kind of real pride. Um, I, I spoke out in the hope that it would be a whistleblow that that something would happen that things would change that my colleagues would 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 speak up that others would come online but i was sadly mistaken and that that didn't happen um and it's to a certain degree perhaps happening now but it certainly didn't happen then so at the time it was very, very damaging to my career, my reputation. Um, you know, I was the subject of an investigation by, by the Medical Council. I was threatened to be struck off if, if I kept uh, speaking out or, or exercising my, my public opinion, reiterating Professor Hennigan or the other evidence-based medicine. So it became very, very surreal. You know, I read in the paper following the, you know, I, I constantly am thinking that eventually somebody else, other people are going to stand up and say what happened in the nursing homes was wrong, that those people deserve a, a, a public inquiry. But that wasn't happening. You know, the, the Irish Times, the day after the protest, there were some five, seven thousand people perhaps at the protest. And, you know, the, the, the newspapers came out and said there was a couple of hundred people there and most of them were right wing fanatics and lunatics. And nothing about the message about the nursing home victims, the people who died, about masks, about Neffet, about policy. None of that message was carrying through. So I was in this bizarre situation where what I was saying had no relevance whatever and what was being considered was the other people who were at the protest or other things that were going on in society that I had no interest in and nothing to do with. 
I was certainly alone in my opinions when I resigned from the Irish Medical Council back in March, April of this year. Um, but I think I understand why I was alone because everybody was fearful, not so much fearful of consequence for speaking out, but fearful of the virus and fearful of, of what it might do and what, it, what would happen to our society. I mean, we all saw those horrible videos of, of what was going on in Malmo in Italy. And I think that certainly has polarized the fear that still uh, is ongoing in our society. But um, I was the first to speak out and, and I did feel alone at, at that time um, for those reasons. But things have changed now and other doctors are starting to speak out. Dr. Martin Feely, um, who was fired for speaking out, has, has come forward. Pat Morrissey speaking out. There are many doctors now who are speaking out, who are questioning the guidelines, the narrative, and questioning the, the presence or absence of, of, of natural science and a respect for nature and a respect for natural science in this process. I mean, this is a virus, you know, that is a novel virus, but it's a virus that behaves like other flu, cold, nasty viruses. It has a natural evolution. So doctors are starting to speak out. There is a group called covidrecovery.ie that I'm part of and other doctors are part of, and we're trying to speak out as much as we can but it's a dangerous place medicine can be very dangerous if you raise your head above the parapet a lot of people are being hurt by the lockdown and we've all heard the usual <coughs> speak about the economy and about you know, how people's jobs and, and, and the harm that the, that the lockdown is doing. And on a personal level, as, as a GP, I see that harm every day. I see people whose identity has been taken away, musicians, theatres, actors, you know, all of these things shut down our culture, our identity shut down, you know. The harm that lockdown is doing is infinitely greater, in my opinion than any benefits that might come out of the lockdown. So I think at the end of the day, in reality, what we have is we have a virus that's in every county in Ireland at the moment. So we have, by proxy, the Swedish approach anyway, regardless of what Neffet and the government is doing. We have a virus that's spreading and we have natural immunity building within the community, regardless of lockdowns and policy. It's difficult to be positive when you're in the eye of the storm and it's very difficult to be positive when you have children because you always worry about them and you worry about their future. But, you know, one of the things that, that I've enjoyed through all of this that I've stayed uh, clued into or connected with is nature and philosophy and reading and art and my inner life. And I hope that my children will cultivate a rich in our life and will be true to nature and the environment and themselves and their own integral strengths and abilities. And if COVID makes us focus on those things, when COVID is gone, if we're stronger internally, artistically, philosophically, if we're stronger in those senses, then the, the world will be a better place for my children, I hope. <laughs>